I don't need the smoke of mirrors Cause I know there's a God who's real I don't need the lights to fool me Cause I have seen the God who heals I know when I ask I'll receive it Cause you're not a God who withholds I hear you say just believe me I need a holy What a year. A year filled with sorrow, pain, hate, anger, fear, and uncertainty. Who has an answer for all of this? Well, we don't know, but as Christians, we believe the Bible to be the Word of God. We believe God is the ultimate authority. Our lives on this earth are short-lived, and in this short amount of time that we have, we experience good things that come from God, but we also experience the evils of this world. We can all look back on certain times this year where we were upset or angry. Maybe you were watching the news and just couldn't believe what you were hearing. Maybe you had to blink twice just to make sure your eyes were still working. Despite what side you're on, as Christians, we must see past all of the fluff and know that there are men and women in America and all over the world 
that had evil intentions and motives. Joseph was a young man and the second youngest son, greatly favored by his father Jacob. Genesis chapter 37, verse 3 through 4. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age. Also, he made him a tunic of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Joseph's brothers began to hate him and even began to have evil intentions towards him. They had brief motives of killing him, but decided to just sell him into slavery instead. It might have begun to look like Joseph's life was going to be filled with pain and tragedy and fear, but God had other plans. He was taken to Egypt where he was purchased by a royal official. He was thrown into prison on false charges, but he was released after being able to interpret the dreams of Pharaoh and he was actually put in charge over Egypt. And you can say that he became Pharaoh's right-hand man. Wow, what a year for Joseph. There was a famine in the land, and Joseph's brothers found themselves in the presence of their brother that they sold off to slavery, and they didn't even know it. Genesis chapter 45, verses 3 through 5. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Does my father still live? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed in his presence. And Joseph said to his brothers, Please come near to me. So they came near. Then he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. This reveals Joseph's great faith in God. Joseph has a totally different perspective than what you might think. His motives and intentions weren't revenge or vengeance or anger towards his brothers for all the evil that they conspired and that they did against him. He saves his family from starvation and death. As time went on, Jacob dies, and Joseph's brothers began to think that because of their father's death, he was going to try to seek vengeance on them. So they send a message to Joseph asking for forgiveness, and Joseph forgives them. Genesis chapter 50 verse 20, But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, in order to bring it about as it is this day, to save many people alive. Through Joseph, God used evil to work out his good purposes, foreshadowing the time when he would bring the supreme good of eternal salvation out of the wicked actions of those who crucified Jesus. Nothing in this story glossed over the presence of evil. Joseph's heart was rubbed raw against the rocks of disloyalty and miscarried justice, just like some are feeling from this past year. Yet time and time again, God redeemed the pain. The torn robe became a royal one. The pit became a palace. The broken family grew old together. The very acts intended to destroy God's people can turn out to strengthen. In a world so much filled with hate and evil, I thank God for all that he's done this past year. Through everything that was going on, pain, sickness, sorrow, fear, uncertainty, God still brought a lot of good out of that, and He's not done yet. And I thank God and look forward to all that He's going to do in the next coming years. Hi, uh, my name is David Lim Prasad. I am from Thailand, 
and I've been safe since uh, 1993 on March 9. The COVID-19, to me, is like a joke uh, because the number and the way how they report it every day, people get, get sick and people get uh, violence. It's, it's, it's so fast, so I don't really believe in it. And uh, even sometimes it just makes you wonder, you know, is it real? So, uh, in Ju July, I drove myself to uh, Prescott July 3rd to go celebrate with my son, you know, at the Prescott Church. And I got there on July 3rd, like uh, 6 o'clock, and then I don't feel good. So I take a temperature, I was like about 105. So my son-in-law, he's a nurse, so he told me, you know, that I need to go to the hospital. But I said, no, I don't want to go hospital. So I drove myself back from Prescott to, uh, back to Las Vegas on the same day. And I went to, to the clinic and they told me I'm okay. I don't, I, I just have a little, little fever, but they say I don't have no, uh, no, uh, no COVID. So I don't know how they know because it take a couple of days to get resolved, but they told me to go home. So I went home, you know, I take uh, Advil, I take Tylenol, I think it's Advil that I take for like about one week to 10 days I've been taking Advil. I finished uh, the whole bottle, I think like about either 90 pill or 190, you know, just to get the fever away. So I told her to go buy me more Advil and she said, no, you don't need Advil, you need to go to the hospital. So I said, I decide, so I think on July 16, either 8 or 16, I go to the hospital emergency and they told me I have COVID-19. So I went in there and uh, stayed there for like about three days and they told me that uh, I'm start losing the oxygen. So two more days, they say I start losing blood. And I say, what do you mean by losing blood? They say, I don't know, you're, you're, you're supposed to have the blood like uh, 155 in your body. I don't know all those numbers, but they told me I have like four left. So they told me that uh, between blood and my lung, so they say that uh, they don't know what to do because my lung is keep like uh, they're trying to give me oxygen. They try to give me the, the, the different kind of ox oxygen. I don't know what it's called, a mask from number two, number five. And then I remember it just like uh, they're moving me around from the first floor to the third floor to the fourth floor, fifth floor. And then they put me back to the fourth floor. <laughs> it's just, I don't know what this nurse doing to me. So anyway, and it's just getting worse that I cannot breathe no more and I don't want no veneration either, you know, the vent machine. What was going through your mind? Because at the beginning of the year, you kind of have doubts, right, about COVID-19. Yeah, yeah. And then you, you get it. Um, did you begin to doubt God or what? were you losing faith? No, I know God was there, but I just, I just like, uh, in that moment, you got so many medication. You got, you got so many uh, testing they do to your body. And I know that God cannot come true. I, I know that because I know that Pastor Greg Mitchell, Pastor Greg Mitchell and Pastor Lamb and a whole bunch of pastors from Canada, like Pastor Mark Dave, they've been praying for me, Pastor Chris Hart. And they know that I'm gonna be healed. But it's just, just things that's happening to me so fast like uh, losing a lot of breathing and lose a lot of blood for like, uh, the dog, even doctor can't believe it, how I lost my blood so, so much. So my daughter, I think the doctor called my, called my daughter, a son-in-law in Arizona, and told me that they cannot help me anymore. That uh, I, I, my, my lungs stopped fighting, you know. They just gave up on me because uh, my lung just would not accept all the oxygen. And then I can breathe in one day. Like uh, your, your oxygen is supposed to be like over 90 when they test. Mine is like 82. The highest was 87. 
and then it goes so low and they just tell me that they try everything they can, they try all medication. And that's when uh, I think my pastor lamb start to uh, call everybody to do a fasting on me. We especially want to be praying for Dave. Uh, his lungs are not responding well. I'm going to be fasting and praying for him tomorrow. I want to encourage as many of you as possibly can join with me to be praying and fasting for Dave. His, uh, his platelet count is way up, which is great, but his lungs are not responding well. And so uh, you definitely need to be praying for Dave. And if you can join me tomorrow, that'll be great. Then we want to be there. And Tuesday morning, everything was back normal. I know. So, and I, the nurse was saying, hey, you OK? I said, yeah, I'm OK. And they said, you're breathing OK? Your oxygen was like above 90, like 92 to 95. Usually normal is 96, 98. But I was like 95 for like four hours, five hours. They come back, they say, you're still 95. So and then so I called my daughter and said, hey, I'm OK. Bring me some real food, you know. <laughs> they brought me some Thai food for real. And they brought me a Thai food. I eat and call Pastor Lamb and say, OK. It just slow development because I, I lost my uh, I, can't, I couldn't walk. I know that they, they tried to walk me to the bathroom, but I lost all my strength from, from the hip down. So they told me I'd been in the bed for so long and lost my energy. So I went to a therapy and then everything else, so I'm good. So, and from that on, yeah, that's all. even the nurse, most of the nurses, they believe in Jesus Christ, most of the nurses are Filipino, and they say that God was helping you. One thing that I know that was God was so real when I was in the hospital, in the Centennial uh, Hospital, I know that they brought a lot of people that have COVID late at night. I don't know why it's always at night, not in the daytime. So it was like about 11 o'clock, you know, they, they brought some patient in, but I have my next door, he's, he's ready to die from COVID too. So I was kind of like, a, that moment, I don't know what's, what's, what happened. I just praying to God that God, you know, I mean, I don't want to go this way. If I'm, I'm, already, I'm already healed. I'm already, I'm already everything, but I, so I pray. I pray a sinner prayer that God will save me and I will, you know, the one that they just brought and I hope everything okay. But the guy next to me, he here, I pray, pray the sinner prayer. He haven't talked since I've been there like almost two weeks because I think he's old, he can't talk. And I was laying down after I finished my prayer. I said, God save me and change me. And I lay down and then I hear he's talking. And he's over 70, over 80 years old and he prayed a sinner prayer. Exactly, I never forget that. He said, Jesus save me. And then he's in Jesus name and I look back, I turn around, I was scared a little bit because it was a miracle that he, I never talked to him. He, he never talked in two weeks I've been there, and he hear the prayer, sing the prayer. And that's 11 o'clock. Two o'clock, they take him out, so I don't know where they take him. Either he passed away, or I don't know where they take him. But all I know is God saved him too. Sometimes I was wondering, you know, when you're in the hospital, you're thinking, you know, God, you know, if you're real, why am I in this station? Is it hell's real, heaven's real? You know, all these things here, because a lot of people backsliding. So all uh, was so clear. God said, you know what, it's, it's up to you. Hell is real, heaven is real. It's you that have to make decision. You have to make the choice. You want to go heaven and hell, you know? He already did everything he can. He, 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 he built a perfect garden. He give a, he, he he have Adam and Eve perfect couple, and he have a like I say he healed the sick. He raised from the dead, you know, in his third three year ministry. So now it's up to us if you want to go heaven or hell. It's our choice. Be the one that chose to go heaven or to go to hell. It's us. Look in the mirror. What can I do with this fire on the inside? I'm burning up with the truth I can't hide You're the reason for this hope in my life I'm gonna let it shine I have to let it shine
Home Bible studies are an integral part of our church every year, but especially this year. There were times where we just couldn't gather at church regularly. These groups gave us all an opportunity to build genuine, deep relationships and help one another. And ese árbol había un nido. And there was an eagle covering the, the chicks. Y era un águila que estaba cubriendo las, a, a, a sus polluelos. And hungry, and hurt, and longing for life. Right. He was a child of God. That's right. That's right. I never thought about that, but that guy was saved. He was he saved. Went to Abraham That's crazy. Though. He was living. God, we pray for your dominion, your grace upon us tonight, God, that you will pour out your spirit, minister to the hearts of the people, God, tonight. God, anoint you, my brother, God, as he ministers your word. We lift up these prayer requests. For Transisco, God, for healing, God. We didn't call him Lord. He didn't say Jesus Christ. He didn't say Savior. Uh, he called him Sir. He had no faith whatsoever. He just thought he was a regular man. How could I be? When we want to do things or we want things to go our own way, when the flesh wins and it entices us, even in the small areas, you know, maybe we'll sleep in when we know we should be going to prayer. Or, you know, it's like. Hay pecados en nuestra vida que no los dejaría en plan Are you born again? I still need to eat. I'm good, though. The devil thought he had a hold of me. The youth making stands for God in this dying generation. Thank God that we have young adults in this church who still stand up for truth. Let's take a look at what they've been up to this past year. And now I'm singing No more shackles on my feet The devil's got no hold on me Jesus' blood has set me free The devil's got no hold on me Coach Gibson. I hit my knees and mercy floods my soul. And though the enemy is near, I'm not giving in to fear. Cause you're the voice of truth that leads me home. So I'm singing no more shackles on my feet. Right now, this is the
You gave a heavenly breath and now we're tearing our chest That's why we're singing it back to you For every battle you've won, for everything that you've done Hey guys, my name is Travis. I'm the door director here at the West Las Vegas Potter's House I don't know what else to say about coronavirus. It's been the biggest blessing we've had for this church. It's brought out a lot of online presence that we didn't know that we could even go into. We always knew there was a possibility of doing it, but it really brought up a lot of things that could be, that could be fixed and we could add to our ministry. Everything has to be sharp because now we're shooting videos we're out there, <laughs> we're just hoping every last one of these members come so we can shoot it and get out of there because you and I had to go and edit. And some nights we'd be there until three o'clock in the morning editing videos and just tired. We're, you know, we're eating Cheetos to stay alive, uh, stay alive and awake for Pete's sake. But these are things that 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 are under the and, and you know what it's a beautiful thing it was it was wonderful to be able to do and and but there there was times where it's like man god please this is this is going for a long time we you know and um you, you know what we we got we you know what happened is we got better <laughs> and once we got better god helped us uh, helped us to get better first and foremost, but God helped us to get ideas. You know, we started going out to the desert, you know what I mean? Taking shots to parks and, and just trying to keep the, keep it rolling, keep the, the fire going, you know, and, and keep people stimulated and let them know, Hey, we're not dead yet. We're not, this church, West Las Vegas, we're strong. We're keeping it strong. You can stay strong. We can do it, you know? And the excitement just kept shooting off, shooting off. They got better. They got better. They got more intriguing, you know? And um, it really just created an online presence, you know what I mean? And um, it was really a beautiful thing, you know? Even, you know, despite the long nights and stuff like that, it's all worth it at the end, you know? It's all worth it at the end, you know? And when people see that, they see that people are still trucking on, you know, if, 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 so, if souls don't get saved, the least that happens is that saints are invigorated and they're, they're, they're ready to see what God has in store. And God has big things in store. He really does. And they're coming and they're happening. So keep your eyes open.